Let's talk about the last few problems on page U of Physics 1135 with Mechanical Advantage. Okay, let's look at the problem here. First of all, it says a steel safe with a mass of 800 kilograms. These problems we cannot solve using mass. We have to convert them into newtons. And so let's do that right away here. We're going to take the 800 kilograms times 9.81, and that will give you the load in newtons. So we need that. Remember the formula for mechanical advantage. It says the run over the rise. Do we know the run? Um, three meters long and one meter above the ground. So we can put in three over one, which gives us a mechanical advantage of three. That was easy. Okay, so let's put three down here. Now, whatever answer you get here, you're going to plug that in up here for the load. Okay, and then you can easily calculate the effort by taking the load divided by the mechanical advantage, and you have the effort. Now, we're not quite done because this says it takes two, uh, 100 newtons just to overcome friction, and then any force beyond that is what's used to actually push it up. So the effort that you found was after you've overcome friction and you're moving it up the ramp. So we have to take this number, we'll call that the effort, add the 100 newtons to that, and then that will be the total force which is what we're asked to find necessary to push the safe up the plank. So <clears throat> I think we'll talk about this in a later um, pace, but just overcoming friction takes a certain amount of oomph. And then once you get past that point, then the rest of the effort you apply is what's actually moving it. Okay. Uh, but that should be sufficient to help you solve this one. All the information we need is there. Let's move on to the next one. All right, on this one, it does give us the weight, 9,500 newtons. Yay! We don't have to convert from kilograms to newtons on this one. We have an inclined plane 10 meters long and 2 meters high. So right away, let's just calculate what would that mechanical advantage be? So the 10 over the 2, right? So that's pretty easy. That's 5. So we know that that's 5. We know the load is the 9,500. We can just take that. We don't have to calculate that. And now we can solve to find the effort. And so using the magic triangle here, we take the top number, 9,500. And we can divide by 5. So go ahead and do that. That will give you your effort. And then you can write that down. That's not the total work. That's just the effort. Okay. Now let's go back and read the problem here. It tells us that the force used to overcome the friction in this problem is 250 newtons. So we're still trying to come up with the total work input. We have the effort. Yes. Okay, so that's actually going to be this same number right here. That's going to be the effort plus 200, that should be a 5, 250 newtons will give us the <clears throat> total effort. So we're not still not done because we are looking for the total work input. Remember what work is, work is force times distance. So how long are we pushing with this amount of force? We're pushing or pulling it up a 10 meter long ramp. So we have to apply that force that you found here for 10 meters and then that will give us the total work. So I'm going to call that A because that's what this is up here, okay? That's the total work input. All right, now, how can we find the total work output? Well, that's what's actually being accomplished, and that is the 9,500 newtons moving up two meters. So we're going to take 9,500 times the two. 
I'm going to let you do that calculation. I'm not going to give you the answer. You do the math. Once you do that, the potential energy, what is potential energy? Mass, or, yeah, mass times gravity times height. Well, that's literally what we have here. 9,500 newtons is the mass times the gravity, we already have, <laughs> that's the weight, times the height, which was the two. So the answer you got for question B is the same. These two numbers will be the same. All right, does that make sense? Now let's go on to efficiency. <clears throat> and efficiency, what was the formula for that? The work output divided by the work input. So you have those two numbers. That's the answer from B here, divided by the answer from A. So when you divide those two, and then you take that times 100%, you have the efficiency. And then the last thing is power generated. And <clears throat> the formula for that is we have to divide by the time, but be careful, they give it to us in minutes, and we can't use that. So we first have to convert two minutes into seconds. Now we can take the total work input from A, divide by the time, and now you will have the answer of the power generated. And it tells you right here, based on the work input, which that's what A is, okay? Divided by the time. And then do you remember what the units are for power? Remember what the units are? I just gave you the answer, watts, right? Yay! All right, I think, was that it? No, I had one more. One. Let's look real quick. I'm not gonna do much on this one. I just wanna give you a heads up. I read this problem, I said, if I was a student doing this, what would be the thing that would probably mess me up? And I think it would be that most students would look at the 400 kilograms and try to plug that in for the load. But remember, the load is the mass times 9.81. So take that kilograms times the acceleration due to gravity. That will be your load. They give you the mechanical advantage is 4. And so now you can very easily calculate the effort. And uh, from there, I think the rest of the, the questions on here are very easy to solve. And to find the power, they actually give you the time in seconds. So again, I think 82 should be fairly easy after you've solved problems like 80 and 81. All right, I hope that helped and that you do well in this and are ready for your checkup.